Hi, so in previous lecture, we have started a case study where we have discussed about the profit and loss account and multi-step PNL account. So now what I will do, I will discuss about the balance sheet, like that how we can prepare the balance sheet from the same case, and then we will discuss about the cash flow statement. Now we already know that in balance sheet, what we do, we record assets and liabilities, right? And uh, we prepare the balance sheet, right? Uh, by recording assets and liabilities. So here, let me let me start with the balance sheet. Here, we will record the assets and liabilities. Then here first, we have to record the assets, right? And after that, we have to record here the equity and liability. So here we will record equity and liability balances, right? Assets. Here we have to record the amount. Right. So we can copy here the assets, equity and liability amount we have to record here. Then here we can see the trial balance. And in credit side, you will get the liability balances, and in debit side, you will get uh, you will get the asset balances. Right. So we have uh, not highlighted the assets and liability balances. So the black ink words are uh, assets and liability balances. Right. So here debtor is given, building is given, drawing is given. And several other balances are given. So first, we will record here non-current assets. Right? First, we will record here non-current assets. Okay. Now, under non-current assets, obviously, we record those assets whose uh, life is more than one year. So here we can see uh, under non-current assets, we have to record plant and machinery, then building. Right? These are the two assets which we have to record uh, here in balance sheet. Then you can see uh, we have to record the building also here. So I will record the building. This is the part of non-current assets. Now here, after that, what we have to do, we have to record the current assets here. So apart from non-current assets, whatever assets are remaining that we have to show uh, under non-current asset side, uh, under current asset side. So debtor is current asset here. Then you can see draw, uh, drawing will be adjusted from the capital. This I will discuss in detail. Cash and bill receivable is the current asset. Right? Cash and bill receivable and debtor is the current asset here. So let's first adjust the debtor balance here. Then we can jump to the next balance, which is given here, cash, right? Now here, before I record the cash, you know, we have to make some adjustments. So I won't record the cash right now here, right? I will ignore the cash adjustment here right now, right? We will come to the cash adjustment. Here we can see next line item is given here, which is bill receivable, right? Which is bill receivable. So bill receivable amount is given here, 4,000. What you can do, you can directly record the cash here, right? You can directly record the cash here and you will get the balance, right? But 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 I would like to you know prepare the cash flow statement so you will be getting more clarity about it. You will be getting more clarity about it. Or otherwise, what we can do, we can directly record here the cash balance, right? Because to prepare cash flow statement, we will require two-year balance sheet. So here we have only one year balance sheet. That is okay. That is okay. What we will do here, we will record the cash balance directly. So at least you will be getting an idea, you know, how full-fledged uh, PNL and balance sheet is prepared. So let's record here the cash balance, right? So you can see here, this is the cash balance which we have recorded. Now, after that, what we have to do, we have to record here the equity and liability balances. So we have recorded all the asset balances here, right? Now, after this, if you see, uh, under liability side, capital is given, then creditor is given, then bill payable is given. So let's first record here the capital. So capital balance is given here, 10,800. Right? This is the capital balance given here. After this, you know what we have to do? We have to transfer this amount. Right? That is profit after tax. That is profit after tax. What you will do, you will transfer this profit after tax there. You will transfer this profit after tax in the reserve and surplus account. Right? We have already discussed this thing that whatever profit will be remaining, right? that will be transferred in reserve and surplus account. So under capital or after capital, we record reserve and surplus account. What we do, we record reserve and surplus account. So here, what you have to do, you have to record the reserve and surplus account, right? And here we will transfer this profit because because if com if uh, company does not give any dividend, right? Here we are assuming that whatever profit company has earned, that whole profit has been retained. So if you do not know what is retained profit, you will learn these things when we will discuss about the ratios. So you have to understand that if any profit has been retained, you have to understand that 
if any profit has been retained, that profit has to be transferred, you know, uh, in balance sheet under liability side. So reserve and capital balance or reserve and surplus balance is here, 2,409, right? So whatever, whatever profit which is not distributed, that will be shown under the reserve and surplus balance. Now here, if you will do the total of capital and reserve and surplus balance, if you will do the total of capital and reserve and surplus balance, so here you will get, that is equity shareholders fund. The total there is going to be equity shareholders fund. So let's do the total of capital plus reserve and surplus. This is your equity shareholder fund. Now why it is the equity shareholder fund? Because, because this is the amount which belongs to the equity shareholders. And that's the reason we call it as a equity shareholder fund. Right? So apart from capital, what equity shareholders they have done, they have invested their profit in the business. The profit got reinvested into the business. And that's the reason we say it as a equity shareholder fund. Now we have recorded here the capital and reserve and surplus balance. After that, you know what we have to do? We have to record the creditor balance and bills payable balance. So I will bring this balance from here. So creditor and bill payable balance is given here. Now one transaction is remaining here. Here drawing is given. If you see drawing is given. What is the meaning of drawing? Drawing means that shareholders, they have invested into the business. Right? They have invested into the business. And later on, they have withdrawn some profit. Like later on, what they have done, they have withdrawn some profit. Right? They have withdrawn some profit. So if withdrawal of profit has been uh, taken place in the business, and if shareholders they have withdrawn some profit, in that case, you know that has to be adjusted from the drawing. So when shareholders they bring some capital, you know, into the business, and what we do, we record that amount in the balance sheet. But if any drawing has been done. Right. If any drawing has been done, so that drawing has to be adjusted from the capital amount. So we will adjust or we will subtract the drawing from capital. Here it means that shareholders they have withdrawn some amount. So I will record minus 920 here and let's do the total of these three balances. So total is here 13,289 rupee. Right? This is the total uh, total of shareholder equity. And if I if I do the total of assets now, so what will be the total of assets? First, let's take the total of assets here. The total of assets is going to be the total of all the above line items. So this is the total of assets here. Okay, this is the total of assets. So here we have done the total of assets. Now what we have to do here, we have to do the total of liability. Okay, so let's do the total. So what is the total of asset here? The total of asset is here 24,000, right? So let's do the total of liability and, and here. Let's see what answer we are getting. So we will take here shareholder equity, right? And we will take creditor and we will take here bills payable. So now you will find that there is difference in the amount, right? We have learned when we have discussed about the bal uh, balance sheet, there we have seen that total liability and total, total asset balance should match. Now here, if you see, there is difference in the amount, right? There is difference in the amount. Now you just try to recall that why this difference is arising. And that's why what I've done, I've taken full-fledged case study here, right? So you should get the understanding about this, that why this difference is arising here. Now, if you see here, there is a difference of some amount, right? There's a difference of some amount. This is the total asset balance. This is the total asset balance here, right? And this is the total liability balance. Here, if you see, uh, tax liability is given, right? Here, if you see tax liability is given, which is 1,460 one crores, right? So what company has to do? Company has to pay this tax to the government. Now, usually, you know, tax is paid after six years, right? Or within six years from the date of finalization of financial statement. So let's suppose if you have prepared your financial statement on 31st March, 2024. So by 30th September, what do you have to do? You have to pay the tax. So usually what companies do, they pay tax, you know, on 30th September or maybe in the month of September. So here, here, this will be your liability unless and until you are paying uh, this tax to the government. So here, one transaction which we have to record in the liability side, which is pending here, that is outstanding tax liability, right? Or here we can say tax liability. So how much is the tax liability here in this case? Here you can see tax liability, which is given in the payroll account is 1,461. Once you will record here tax liability, and after that, if you will do the total of equity shareholder fund, creditors, 
will stable and tax liability. So here you will find that your balance will match. Right here you will find that your balance will match. So we can check here the uh, difference between asset and liability should be zero here. So 24,000 minus 24,000. So if you will check this balance here, so the difference is zero here in this case. Right here you can see the difference is zero here in this case. And, and we understood that how we can prepare the balance sheet, right? I think you understood right? Uh, how we have to prepare the balance sheet. Now, now quickly, what I will do, I will revise uh, what I have discussed till now. So you will be getting more idea here, right? So here, what we have done, we have seen that how to prepare the profit and loss account. Right? We understood how to prepare the profit and loss account with the help of trial balance, right? And I think you got the idea about trial balance. Then we have discussed about the multi-step panel. Now, this is important uh, statement. Now, why it is this uh, important statement? Uh, when we will prepare the cash flow statement, so there you will be getting more idea about it. There you will be getting more idea about it. Then what we have done, we have prepared the balance uh, balance sheet with the help of same trial balance. And you can see our balance sheet uh, is matching. Right here you can see the balance sheet is matching here. So we can say that our... Uh, Balance are okay, right? Our balance are okay, and we have prepared the correct financial statements. So, what I will do, I will take one more case study where we will solve ca cash flow statement, where we will discuss about the cash flow statement. So, you will be getting more and more idea. So, thanks a lot for watching this video. Go and revise everything. Thank you.